say that the woman would chop the man's limbs off and so I mean is that in self-defense or or that she's retaliating to his aggression or it sounds rather extreme to go that far yeah, it sounds rather extreme to you because it's not normal uh, from the environment you are coming from but um, uh, it might not be just frustration, it might be um, aggression as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Ms. Von Eldoret, do you want to add anything to that comment? Okay, maybe they don't want to add on to anything, but uh, any more comments? We've got Prahlad as well, if he wants to add anything. Prahlad, do you want to add anything? You usually are a lifesaver, Prahlad. Um, okay, here, mm. we're told about man and uh, how he should really apply his strength because here in uh, in this material world regardless of whatever is done man still appears to be the strongest and smartest whenever we we speak about some things like the i remember there was um, there was this documentary that i was watching uh about this killer called the zodiac killer so apparently he stated in one of his anonymous letters that the reason why he murders people is because man is more smarter and more stronger than the rest of the other animals. So it's more fun to hunt them. So that's why, you know, men are generally the smartest and strongest. So we are told that it, their strength must be applied to, to protect the weak and not just for aggression, like when somebody just picks a fight with someone else or, and it's um, not and it's not really uh, very nice. And uh, we are also told here, similarly in sex life, according to religious principles, it should be only for the purpose of, um, of getting a child or children. And these children much, must be uh, must be under the responsibility of their parents and must be uh, made to to be Krishna conscious, you know. Uh, so whenever, even if even if you you have you're, you're just there for the aim of a child, you must still encourage your child to move on to this path of Krishna consciousness. That that's all I have to say. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for that. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any more realizations? Okay, Prabhuji, I think it's a short perfect. Uh, that's why we don't have much realization. Okay. I um, I, I, actually, I've got some, I've, I've got a presentation. Yes, Prabhuji. So. You can share the, uh, I've enabled you to share the screen. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes, probably. Yes. yes. Okay. So, yeah, I'll start uh, um, with uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya first. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate 
Vasudevaya. So yeah, thank you for giving me an opportunity. Uh, I know it's a very small um, text. So I actually decided um, to recap slightly on what we have done. Um, and uh, basically a summary which uh, of this um, um, chapter, um, what we have covered so far and what we'll be covering. So we've covered um, the purport, uh, balam balavatam chaham kama raga vivarjitam dharma virudho bhuteshu kamosmi bharata sabha. I am the strength of the strong, devoid of passion and desire. I am sex life, which is not, um, sorry, I can't see my screen, so I need to move this somewhere else. Uh, Okay, uh, which is contrary to religious principles, O Lord of Bharatas, Arjuna. The strong man's strength should be applied to protect the weak, not, the, not for personal aggression. Similarly, sex life, according to the religious principles, dharma, should be the propagation of children, not otherwise the responsibility of parents, is then to make their offsprings Krishna conscious. So um, going on this verse, I don't know whether you've all seen the acronym which was prepared by uh, Sutapa Prabhu, uh, which I sent over on the, the group. But basically acronym for this um, chapter is HEAD. So, over, overall is to do with knowledge of the absolute. So just think about whenever is your next holiday destination, the choice of university for your studies or the restaurants for next week's birthday party. More things in life require some research. So when we value our gut feeling, we simultaneously utilize our intelligence and exercise discrimination. The same goes for spirituality. It is not simply an emotional feeling or practice. It requires intelligent research and information gathering. It is an affair of the head and the heart. Einstein once stated that religious practice with our philosophy was simply sentimental. In a more acute situation, downright fanatic. In chapter seven, entitled Knowledge of the Absolute, we learn the three philosophical truths which instill confidence and conviction in the path of devotion to Krishna. So hopefully this chapter actually can actually make you aware there is absolute there and the, gives you a knowledge to actually gain more devotion towards the Lord. So going into the, the um, acronym HEAD, we've already covered hearing part of it. So if you see on the, in the first text, Krishna says, Tak Shrunu, means now hear from me. So I, 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 I can read through, I don't know whether you would like me to read through the, um, the summary of the head or not. So anyone, would you Can like I me to read? to read for you? Or um, Prabhuji, whatever you can give us, it's good. So if you want, we can help you with the reading. So if someone can read the hearing part of it. Okay, Prabhuji, I will uh, read it. Modern thinkers often talk of proving everything scientifically and rejecting anything which cannot be directly perceived by our senses. While this may seem a logical objective and rational approach, it does have inherent limitations. How do you discover that which lies beyond your immediate perception? For example, if you wanted to identify your father, the most practical way would be to ask your mother. 
you could subsequently verify by a DNA test. If you program in the other, if you wanted to find out where BBC was showing tonight, the obvious approach would be to consult a TV guide. You could subsequently verify by actually watching the programs. In other words, it's childish and absurd to solely depend on our sensory experience to provide all answers. Accepting a higher authority, be it the mother or the TV guide, opens up opportunities to experience and understand things directly. Krishna begins this chapter by stressing the absolute necessity of hearing from the spiritual sources, higher authorities, to grasp cosmic truths. This is known as the descending path of knowledge. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, yeah, we saw the importance. Actually, the very first thing in our uh, devotional practice, the first thing is Shravanam, means hearing. So, we covered in text one where Krishna says, the Supreme Personality of God had said, Now hear, O son of Pritha, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, without mind attached to me, or with mind attached to me, you can know me in full, free from doubt. So that is very important, the hearing part of it. And we've covered that. So I, I thought I better, so this is very easy. So somebody wants to wants to um, say, what's in chapter, chapter seven? So when you remember the, the acronym HEAD, you know hearing is the top, top most. Then the second part is the everywhere. So if somebody can read uh, the part um, which is everywhere, Would anybody like to read that? Any volunteers? Okay, I will continue. Everywhere from 4 to 12, by hearing from authorized spiritual sources, one can acquire profound knowledge of the divine. In answer to the common challenge, can you show me God? Krishna cites the analogy of pearls strung on the thread. The pearls are fixed in perfect pattern, arranged as a beautiful necklace, while the thread remains completely invisible. Similarly, God designs, creates, and sustains the complex working of the universe, yet remains invisible to the immature observer. The extreme intricacy and sophistication of the creation, however, naturally indicates the presence of higher intelligence. Krishna goes on to explain how he is also the essence of everything within the creation. The taste of water, the light of the sun, and the ability in men. In this way, through the eyes of knowledge, one can learn to see God everywhere as the source of creation and also within the creation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So yeah, as we saw in the earlier uh, texts that uh, Krishna is everywhere. So I'll just read one of the translation from text four. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. All together, these eight constitute my separate material energy. So if we look at even further, he says, I am both my spiritual as well as material energy. So both are his energies. Um, so this again, just gives us another acronym everywhere. So Krishna is everywhere. So if you know the hearing part of it, and the second part is everywhere, you know basically what chapter seven covers. 
I'm not going to say anything on accept or reject because um, I can say we can we can read about it, but it's, that is something which will come on later on. So I'll basically tell you accept or reject. There are things. Um, there there are um, um, there is purport about um, the types of people who approach Krishna. Then there are also um, Dushkritinas, the people who don't want to know Krishna. So there are different types. That is explained in the in chapter in text 13 to 19. So so if you if I, I can I can I can um, just read a little bit here. Uh, there are four types of people who don't accept God, albeit with different degrees of selfish intent. So, so there are some Sukritina, some people who actually go to the Lord for earth. Um, so some, sometimes you want money or sometimes you are diseased. So you go for your own selfish purpose. Uh, and then there are people actually who are completely, who, who don't, who don't um, um, realize they are atheist and people like that. So this is... Uh, something which is mentioned in that um, ter text 13 and 14. And finally, um, text 20 to 30, it mentions about demigod. And he says, Krishna is the supreme. And actually, demigod worship also, although it's good, but the ultimate worship is Krishna. So you should be always worshiping Krishna. So I don't know whether anyone's got any point there or shall I move on to the next bit, which is about this text. Prabhuji, let's move on. Okay. So, Balam Balavatam Chaham. So Balavat, we've seen that one who has strength, a strong man, that strength is Krishna. Everyone of, of us has some strength. We are moving our hands, our legs, talking, but because of all these strengths are Krishna, they are under Krishna control. It is, it is not in our control, although we think that this is our strength. So just going on to the point you made earlier about, you know, people think they are strong and all, but we actually, we think we are strong, but this is not, this is not our strength. The strength is given to us by Krishna. So I've just pulled a text from um, a chapter three. So it's just to remind you, uh, the person in material consciousness is convinced by false ego that he is the doer of everything. He does not know that the mechanism of body is produced by material nature, which works under the supervision of the Supreme Lord. In below text of Bhagavad Gita, Lord says, everything is being done by the direction of Prakriti, nature. Uh, so Bhagavad Gita chapter three, text 27. Prakriti kriyamanani gune karmani sarvasaha ahankara vimudatma karta aham iti manyate. So the translation is as follows. The bewildered spirit soul under the influence of the three modes of material nature, thinks himself to be the doer of activities, which are in actually carried out by nature. So we are all covered by the three modes. Um, so going into the uh, example given by Srila Prabhupada, um, in Vrindavan, there was a wrestler he was very proud of his strength, a strong man. He was quarreling with ev anyone and everyone was afraid of his encroachment. But then after some time, that man was paralyzed. He couldn't even walk. All his strength was finished. So here Krishna says, I am the strength. So long as Krishna allows you to use that strength, you can be proud of your strength but as soon as he withdraws the strength, you are useless. If anyone understands this philosophy, that I possess strength 
I possess this wealth, I possess this beauty, I possess such and such education, but they are all Krishna's. This is Krishna's consciousness. Actually, I do not possess anything. Krishna has given me the privilege of using these things. I must know that these are Krishna possessions, Krishna's possessions. So we wrongly think that I am the proprietor of this thing. I possess these things. It is Maya. We claim that this is our country and this is my land. It is not so. The land belongs to Krishna. He has already explained in text four of this chapter, Bhumi, Apo, Nalo, Vayu, earth, water, fire, and air are my different energy. So we claim that the land belongs to me or you. It belongs to Krishna. We are all allowed to use for it for some time. We come here empty handed and we go empty handed. The things we are proud of possess possessing remain here. That is Krishna consciousness. So just another mantra from Ishopanishad, um, which is actually stresses this point. Uh, it says, Ishavashyam idam sarvam yat kincha jagatyam jagat tena tyaktyana bunjita ma krita kashya swidanam. So translation for this is everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things necessary for himself, which are set aside as his quota. And one should not accept other things, knowing well to whom they belong. So going on to this um, verse again, um, second line of the text 11, Kama Raga Vivarjitam. So Kama means lust, Raga means attraction, and Vivarjitam means devoid of. I have some threat, strength, but if I become attached to it, thinking it is my strength, it is my money, it is my man, mind, ahim aham mameti, I am such and such big man, and I have such and such things. This is called aham mama, my strength. No, it is not your strength. If you know if, if it is your, not your strength, that is Krishna's strength and should be used for Krishna, then it is kama raga vivarjitam. So actually that is a fact. And this is instruction given by Krishna. Arjuna was so was a strong man, experienced in fighting. He understood that this fighting strength of mind is actually Krishna's. So if Krishna wants to use it for his purpose, why shall I not fight? I was refusing to use this strength, thinking that this is my strength. Why shall I fight against my relatives? That is illusion. When Krishna understood that, the strength belongs to Krishna and Krishna wants me to fight. And so I must use for his satisfaction. So he decided, yes. So basically, Kama Raga Vivarjitan, if Krishna is the master and we are simply Krishna's servants, then when master orders something, the servants must do it. That is Bhakti. And that is Krishna consciousness. So something I, I was thinking of, what is actually bhakti? So bhakti uh, in nectar of devotion, uh, it's, there is a proper definition of bhakti given in uh, nectar of devotion. And this goes as follows. The person who renders service or seva is called sevaka and the beneficiary is called sevya. The principle behind rendering any service is to please the Savior. The first class devotional service 
is defined by Srila Rupa Goswami uh, as follows. That is a nectar of uh, devotion. Anya bilasita sunyam gnana karmadi anavritam anukulyena krishnanu silanam bhaktir uttama. One should, one should render transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably and without desire for material profit or gain through fruitive activity, activities or philosophical speculation. That is called pure devotional service. So here, the significant point here is Anu Kulyena Krishnanu Silanam. Transcendental loving service to the Supreme Lord Krishna favorably because the service is considered as devotional when it is rendered favorably to Lord Krishna. A favorable service has two essential elements. So first element is welfare of the served and another one is authorization for the service. Without these two, we, the service doesn't even stand good as service. So going into the next two lines, Dharma Virudo Bhuteshu Kamos Mi Parata Sabha. Dharma, religious, is the reference to human society because religious principles are not found in animal society. They have no religion. From Prabhupada's lecture, I'm just saying from Prabhupada's lecture here, for example, as soon as a male dog finds female dog, because he's lusty, he wants to have sex, never mind what it is, a small dog or a big dog, because he's animal. But if man does this, it is dharma viruddha. So according to human convention, one must have a married wife and there is a process. Is it, it is not like cats and dogs. As soon as one is lusty, he rapes. No, it is duty of a married man. Putra tarte kriyate bharya. Bharya means wife and putra means son or looking it more widely, daughter also. For begetting son, a wife is accepted, not enjoying sex life. Krishna says, dharma viruddha karma, when lusty affair is regulated by re re religious principle, I am kind of lust. This means you beget son or daughter according to religious principle. That is Krishna consciousness. Human life is such a responsible life that a little deviation will make one responsible for the resultant action. So this is um, basically a summary of that. So just um, uh, taking into um, more, uh, more wider, I thought this, this um, actually goes into the four regulative principles. So the four regulative principles, are no illicit sex, no gambling, no intoxication, no meat eating. So the four regulative principles are established upon the four pillars of religion. And the four pillar, pillars of religion are truth, austerity, cleanliness, and mercy. So I've just quoted something on this um, uh, verses here, uh, which are related to it. So which are all transcendental qualities. Uh, so I've just say like Bhagavad Gita 16.1 to 16 to, to three, it, call, it talks about all transcendental qualities belongly, belonging to the godly man. So um, you should read that if you want to refer to the transcendental qualities. Uh, and also Srimad Bhagavatam, um, Canto 1, text 17, 25, uh, which, which is about a bull who was actually uh, referring to a bull who was standing on the one leg. Uh, so e every, uh, every yuga, uh, every yuga, one, one um, um, 
leg was disappearing. So there was only one leg, which was uh, the truthfulness. And, and then it says about hobbling along. So we need to protect uh, whatever was there before um, in our qualities in this life as well. And also there is also um, um, text, same, same, same um, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, 17, 43 to 44. So if you get the time, actually, you should be uh, reading that. So 1.17.45, which are basic principles of religion and prepares the ground for reception of advancement in spiritual knowledge. And um, the finally one was, was 1.17.38, uh, the counteracted by principles of religion. So, so this is actually um, talks about Kali Yuga, which came, gave permission to reside in places where gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter were performed. So this is what it's, it's talking about. So um, going on to the, the pillars, so cleanliness, Illicit sex is is um, is, re, is is it it goes in parallel with cleanliness, and then um, meat eating uh, it goes with the mercy or even compassion, and then um, austerity uh, with intoxication, and uh, truthfulness which goes alongside with gambling. So if we are actually serious about entering into the kingdom of God, Vaikuntha, then we should be very careful to follow the four regulative principles. So instead of being sinful to become pious, you simply have to follow these four regulative principles. Srila Prabhupada's uh, lecture uh, in 1975, that's what he said. Uh, and also he mentioned something um, in, in um, New York Times on 2nd of September, 1972. And he says as follows, in society, we propose that you give up illicit sex, meat eating, intoxication, and gambling. When people hear this, they go away saying, oh Swamiji, he's very conservative, but I cannot become liberal and tell everybody, go ahead and do all nonsense and you can become God conscious. I cannot possibly recommend that. Therefore, my first condition is that if someone wants to become my student, he has to follow these four regulative principles. Consequently, I do not have many followers, but I do have to select few. But because they are select, they will bring about revolution in the world. One moon is sufficient to dissipate darkness. So that was the interview with... Um, um, someone in, in New York Times on 2nd of uh, September 1972. So this is what I'm ending on. It's to do with um, uh, how this verse is actually linked with the uh, what, what we shouldn't be doing, um, the four regulative principles. So um, that is the end. If anyone's got any comments or questions or any, any additions, um, please say so. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you so much for this uh, delightful commentary and uh, including what uh, Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada has uh, said to us. And um, it is good because as we are learning, um, you have uh, put a base, uh, a strong foundation for us. So I am really happy uh, that you did the four um, principles, regulatory principles that we should be following. Uh, we, we knew about it, but you shed uh, more light on them and how it uh, combines with other activities that we should not be doing. So uh, I'm sure uh, there might be questions. Anybody with a question or comment?
A lot of basic concepts have been clarified today. We, uh, we've been told uh, no gambling, but why no gambling? So Prabhuji has told us why no gambling, no illicit sex. Why no illicit sex? We want to be clean before we go to Krishna. No meat eating, so we, we want to be kind. We don't want to kill anybody, take their karmas. So I think um, the concepts have been clarified today. I mean, at least I've learned that. I didn't know about it. I just knew about the four regulatory principles. But what was the reasoning behind it, I learned today. So gambling means truth, austerity, uh, would be for uh, to intoxication, sex would be cleanliness, and meat would be mercy. So thank you, Prabhuji. I learned something new today. Uh, I'm sure the others have learned that as well, or might they might have known. But for me, this was very, very enlightening. Any comments from the group? I think they're all sto stoned, Prabhuji. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking the nectar of whatever you have poured. No, I, I tried to put it on uh, all together. I thought yes. it's easier for me to present it that way. Yes. Um, so. Thank you for making all this effort. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. No one could have done it any better. Any questions? Any comments? Okay, if there are no questions and no comments, we can end this session, this beautiful, lovely session. And... Uh, uh, Hare Krishna. Yes. Uh, Mataji. Yes. yes uh, uh, I request one thing, uh, if possible, send this uh, slide. And uh, 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 one small question, intoxication, just one, give one example of intoxication. Sorry, Prabhuji. He, uh, uh, Biswal Prabhuji is asking how uh, austerity is related to intoxication. Yes. Okay. So if you if you go into um, uh, intoxication, so intoxication uh, is austerity. So so just um, I'm just thinking uh, here. So what? How would people go on uh, high? You know, sometimes you. Uh, when, when you have, um, say, uh, a drug or something like that. So you will temporarily go on a high, won't you? So, um, so or, or things like, uh, uh, simple things like, okay, uh, a, a tea with caffeine. Yeah. Okay. So that would, that would actually make you slightly better in the morning, won't you? So, right, right. so, so the, the thing is, if you have austerity, you won't have that, right? You, won't, you, you, will, you will avoid that. So when okay. you avoid that, you are actually, you are, you, are, you are having, you are doing an austerity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, Prabhupada. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just uh, send, if possible, share the slide. And, uh, I can I can share the slide with uh, Mataji and can she keep she can put it on the are you in the group? Uh, no, I'm not in the group. So would you but, give uh, me your number, your telephone yeah. number, then I can put you on the group. Plus two five four. This will probably and Prabhuji, we have a YouTube uh, channel as well on which I will put this recording, just in case if you wanted to hear. And uh, uh, that will be more beautiful, huh? you know. Some, some, sometime we miss something. Yes, yes, yes. Even uh, I record. Uh, yeah, that will be more beautiful thing. Just yeah. uh, share the link. Share that link as well with you, Prabhuji. Okay, Mataji. I'll put you in the group and I'll share the link so you can refer to this. Okay, Mataji. Thank you so much. 
Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Any more questions or comments? Okay, then if there are no questions or comment, we'd like to really glorify Prabhuji for this fantastic <clears throat> presentation today. So let us uh, unmute ourselves and chant the Mahamantra once. Hare Krishna. Shila Prabhupada. So I was just, so it's not my work actually, I've just been reading, capturing everything and then that's what it is. So it's just uh, something I'm repeating what I've heard and I've um, read. So Prabhuji, that effort for doing this thing for us is really, really much appreciable. When will we be able to do this, Prabhuji? You have just <laughs> given us ready-made laddus, which we are just eating. <laughs> so we don't have to get the flour or the sugar and heat and uh, make the laddus. You have just given it to us. So we are really, really grateful. Thank you so much. Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah.